guys, welcome to Sujata Ayer Talk Show. Our today's guest is very experienced and talented and I'm going to list a few details about him before we start the show. Colonel Dr. Mohinder Pal Singh, who has served the Indian Army for 30 years and has participated in various combats with his battalion. An experienced and talented professional who is also a founder and director at AMAS. To know more about Colonel Dr. Mohinder Pal Singh, you can read the description below and follow him on Instagram. So thank you so much for being a part of this show, sir, and giving your time. It's an immense pleasure to have you with us today. Um, I'm going to uh, list the short questions just so that people are motivated and they know um, how life struggles are and still one can, you know, look after to a bright side of life. Uh, so thank you so much again for your time and for being with us in today's show. Yes. So the first question uh, that I want to ask you is, since you have been in the army for a long time, uh, so what do you vaguely or what do you remember about the day you enlisted? So as far as, you know, enlisting is concerned, I was in my final year at uh, Mumbai. And uh, generally, you know, since you are also from Mumbai, very yeah. few people who are in Mumbai, they're looking at, uh, you know, uh, as a career in the government, most of them are oriented towards corporate in that being right. a, uh, corporate capital of the country. So most of the students, uh, you know, kind of aim out, you know, big corporate houses and all. But here I was, uh, who I never thought of going into any other corporate thing. When I was in the final year, these companies came for campus placements and Xavier's. So I also applied and I sat for these companies who came and one of the companies uh, was a corporate house and it was offering very good salary as a management trainee. And the final uh, round of interview was in this uh, the hotel, I think, right towers in at Nariman Point. Yeah. So the final round, we were called there, and you know, young college student, finally, student, we were so fascinated seeing the glamour of of it all. And then I was so happy, and I called up my father, and I said, you know, I've made it finally out of 300 students. And you know what he answered, and he said, if you uh, join the, you know, this. Uh, Hotel industry, that this was a hotel industry management training. You will serve the rich, and if you join the country, join the army, you will serve the country. So that's uh, what changed my thought process. The result of uh, this IMA in military academy came, and when the merit list came, I was there in the merit list, and uh, we got a letter that uh, you got to join by, I think it was around 5th July or something, 1988. And uh, Bombay University results are not declared before mid-July. So uh, the Army headquarters said that uh, we will not let you join unless we see the results. So I went to Army headquarters and said the Bombay University results are not declared before uh, July, mid, it could be end of July also. So they said, no, you go there and uh, go to the university. They will give you something called as provisional sealed result. And you should get us as sealed result. You are not supposed to even open the seal. And then we will accept now, as a young boy of 20, I came back from Delhi to Mumbai and I went to Kalina. The Bombay University headquarters yeah. uh, is still in Kalina. Yeah. So I didn't have much idea. I went there and I, you know, whom I went to, I straight away went to the vice chancellor. <laughs> now, today I think back, <laughs> I went to the registrar of the university and he was not in office. So I went and stood outside the vice chancellor's office. Okay. And vice chancellor's PA said, Who are you? <laughs> I said, I'm. From St. Javis College, finally a student. Now I'm looking for my result. He says, Saab, the result is a So I said, I don't know Saab doesn't but I want to beat him. So suddenly, you know, I thought that he will not. But see, I always believe when I get to talk to you. I One thing which I always did in my life, I never gave up. Yeah. Right. I knew that I'm going to come back from Bombay to Army headquarters and get come back with my provisional result. After one hour, the pro vice chancellor comes in and he sees a boy standing outside. He says, yeah, what do you want? I said, sir, I had thought I just have 10, 15 seconds to tell him why I'm here. Otherwise, he's too senior a guy to waste his time right. on. So I just uttered two or three sentences, sir. I'm selected as an officer. They're wanting a provisional result from you. Can you give me, sir? And this, some pity came on his uh, eyes that you know, this guy is kind of requesting. He said, okay, come into my office. Called the bell, told the P he wrote a Parchi by my roll number, told the PN, go and check from the examination department. Has his papers been checked? 
and what i was sitting in the chair in front of him praying oh god may my all papers be checked yeah <laughs> right after 10 minutes this pa comes and says ha sa his papers have been checked he says then get them typed and give me a sealed envelope and hand over to me after half an hour i get a sealed envelope which i wanted to ask i asked the pa kya main pass ho gaya hu <laughs> and he told me beko kya pata hum nahi bata sakte aapko and rbi at quarter had told me you will not open the seal if the seal is tampered with we will not accept it yeah so like a very sincere student i carried that envelope next day in a train to the army at quarters and i went to army at quarters i gave it to the clerk i went back to siliguri where my that time my house was and after seven day i got the call letter to join oh. indian military academy on 5th july and i knew i have passed Yeah. Till that time, I didn't know I passed my BSc or not. And then after it was a very different uh, game altogether. Being part of an elite uh, training academy, Indian Military Academy, Dehradun, where the focus of life totally changed towards military training, and uh, I felt very satisfied and uh, that I'm going to serve my nation, yeah. which I did for next few years. So. it has been a curiosity that you had uh, managed to hold at that particular point and uh, still you know take that to the next level and know what the results are this actually shows two things one is that uh, you are you are the very sincere and uh, so and the trust is there on you so the, i guess that is what uh, one of the main thing is there when we look up to any army officials we know for one thing two things actually one is they are always on time and they are uh, they are very disciplined and the second thing is that you can just look at them and you can trust them life puts you the life puts you under such circumstances that they life tests you and if you come out uh, if you succeed and you come out then uh, life has a different way see uh, which i did not mention uh, this thing happened about the result little later but what happened before was something which was uh, again a uh, kind of change the direction of my life so when i had to go for my interview that is the army interview and that was around 22nd march i think 1988 and uh, on 16th march that is about a week before that i get a call from my home that my father has met with an accident and he's in icd so i am staying in bombay my father is in siliguri which is quite far the train is 48 hours yeah and he, i get a call that he's really really serious and uh, on my exam the also on my head after the first week the final exam start in mumbai university so on uh, one day i sustained i said okay they told me okay take don't worry we are taking care of him next day it was situation worsen and uh, by afternoon uh, i had indication that he is not going to survive and by night i got a call that he start back he is no more so this happened 6 days uh, before i had to report for my trip for the army officer so took the midnight flight and landed there for a funeral and after that two days uh, other colleagues and all they asked me what do you want to do So I I said yes. It was my father's dream. It was uh, remember that letter I told you. Yes. Yes. Written, yes. Don't serve the prophet. Yes. Serve the nation. Yes. So I I told them that this is what his last letter was. Uh, I received what uh, one week before. So I think I should go for this. When they all agreed, he said yes. Uh, that was his uh, point that we should. I being the youngest sibling of my family, the elders had not gone for uh, had gone for a different career. So he probably expected me to follow the career. Yeah. So I, I from there I after imagine uh, the death, the funeral, and next day I boarded the train, and I went for my uh, interview. And uh, interview uh, for armed forces is a five-day process. It's a it's where you stay there in the campus, and it's a five-day process. So on the second or third day, uh, this one of part is personal interview. Like we are talking. Yeah. So one of the senior officers interacts with you for about an hour. So during that interaction, he asked me. So tell me about your father. So I said, sir, uh, he's uh, so and so, and he was doing this job, and he's a field colonel, and but he's a pastor. So he asked me, when did he pass away? So I said, sir, seventeenth March. I forgot to tell the year, right? So he asked me, seventeenth uh, March. Uh, how many years back did he die last year? So I said, no, sir, this year. 
so when he heard this he looked at the calendar i still vividly remember that his head turned and he looked at the calendar and in the calendar he he looked and he said you mean he died last week last wednesday i said yes so there was a silence for about 2 minutes then he asked me how is he how are you here i said sir i am here because he my father always wanted me to <laughs> right so sometimes life is a roller coaster ride uh, initially but if you tackle it then you sail right so yeah. i thereafter i joined and i never had any or in fact uh, this is the 30 years in the uniform has been the most memorable experience and i feel that i i really did the right decision at that moment a little strong show of strength yeah. to hold myself together in this uh, in this difficult time that i reap the benefit of serving the nation for next 30 years yes and one more thing is that you cannot plan your life is what i learned from your uh, story also that even though you have certain plans life has something that has set for you so is something that is very unfortunate or uh, whatever any situation that you put into you need to adapt it's a, nothing is fortunate or unfortunate it is a turn which yes. the life brings in front of you and if you if you take the right decisions at the right time then yes you fly yes you just have to take the first step in faith hmm. correct so sir you must be having the training and all there um, like the daily trainings at least one or two times when you're not to the full of your health but that day also you have to push yourself to that training at that time how do you manage and how do you motivate yourself to do that uh no firstly i'll you know tell you something that uh, when we're training we are training hard right we are training hard day and night uh, the training goes on and uh, and you know this hard training really hardens you up and i really don't remember falling sick any time <laughs> right yeah. now the, there was a moment uh, i tell you falling sick is out of question you don't fall sick yeah. because there is no time to fall sick right <laughs> okay all the time you are moving and uh, that is with everyone now there could be some mishaps yeah. right i was i had small mishap like i fractured in one of the pt tests i i there was it was involving a the high jump and then landing mm. on your hands so in during that landing my some my okay. finger stood and it was a fracture right so that was a little incident which i had so they what they did was so finger fracture now there's nothing uh, much uh, though it was uh, right hand right hand so they said okay we'll plaster your finger <laughs> so they uh, what they do they tied my two fingers together and they said now it is become immobile now you can do any activity <laughs> Okay, you do the training. Only thing you don't do is firing. So oh, then yeah. you know I was kind of partially excused, and uh, that's okay. And in one of, I still remember when I was doing this commando course. So in that there's one of the very difficult uh, obstacles where you jump into a swimming pool from or almost 60 feet height. Normally you have a 10 meter board. Highest board you've seen uh, is a 10 meter board right. in the swimming pool. So this is something like 20 meters, oh. right? so and then you have to you know jump into the pool so by first you are hanging the rope and then you leave the rope and you have to come zip down and you know okay. it takes about 5 6 seconds right so it was very difficult uh, it's called a lido jump so oh. i could see the trees before below me right yeah. so okay. it's okay now obviously it is scary i mean i don't want to even say that you know i was uh, james bond i was not scared i was scared anybody would be at that hanging with your in a rope So the instructor told the best way to jump is you jump vertically. Just leave your hand and come down straight so that you land in your with your feet Eat. and you go straight into the water and then you will not get hurt. But it is not it is easier said than done. Then you stabilize your body. Yeah. So when I left the rope, I uh, you know my body twisted and I fell like this. So when okay. you fall like this, you tend to get injured. I still remember that you know my mouth opened during the fall and I hit and my jaw started bleeding. So when I came out of the swimming pool, my instructor told me, "Don't worry." He gave me some sugar. He said, "You eat some sugar, and when the sugar, the bleeding will stop." And he says, "No, sick report नहीं करना है. Doctor के पास जाने का जरूरत नहीं है." So instructor is very experienced there. So he told me, "Just sit down, relax. I know you may have some pain for some time, but if you report sick, and if you go to a doctor unnecessarily, then you will lose part of the training." So I waited. I sat there, and about after two hours, I felt pretty okay, and the training continued. So in the training, in a nutshell, what you ask me, the answer is 
you don't have time to fall sick yeah Just and you, even if you are a little injured or anything you cannot escape yeah. or you cannot uh, just give yeah, up you got to you do it to and do then it. after some time you forget about the injury yeah. and uh, you know i still remember after that wo kuch aur shuru ho gaya training and i forgot ke mere yahan se khun nikal raha tha ya mere ko yahan pe pain ho raha tha wo nahi kiya but that is actually a good view towards life yes. no sir because yes. we here think about the pain so much that we dwell in it but yes. it's the other way out there even if you're hurt you all see the brighter perspective that you have to still be and doing the training and do the best it's a lot to learn uh so coming on to the next question so uh, you have served the indian army for a long time and you have honed a lot of skills so uh, which are not limited to the battlefield so is there any story or any point that you want to share with the viewers as a leader who are to take you have to take decisions and your decisions can save lives or yeah. lose lives so the whole process of selection or army officers is uh, selection based on leadership traits right so you must have good leadership qualities because the moment you become an officer the army entrusts you with a uh, with soldiers you are made a commander yeah. of a small sub unit and you are leading them you are leading them in peace you are leading them in war right and you have heard so many cases of gallantry and bravery by the young soldiers in Kar- young officers in kanchil war Body for the chakra part. So at times everybody is put into a test. I remember now since you asked me, I remember that I was just about three months of service. I was 22 years of age and I was a second lieutenant, which means the first rank used to be. So one of my commanders uh, he tasked me that uh, there is a peak, very high mountain called uh, it's about it's around 4,800 uh, meters. and uh, there is a route to go to that so which route used to get uh, blocked during the heavy snowfall and winter this is in jnd camp okay on. now this height is completely snow covered uh, you know during winters and six months this we had a post on the border pass mm-hmm. border so the post used to get cut off like the people are staying there but the route is cut off so their uh, you know food and other things are heavily dropped yeah so they can't come back So this used to be very precarious post. It is still there. So he said that uh, this my uh, commander in the rear rank of brigade. He gave the task to our battalion, and the battalion then told me that okay, you take a special patrol and you open the route. Now it was summer time. The snow had almost melted, and there's a rocky mountain. So you know, this part of the Himalayas was above the tree line. So what is tree line? Himalayas has two lines in the mountains. What is tree line? Above that, there are no trees which grow because yeah. oxygen is less. Less, yeah. And one is a snow line. The other line is called snow line. And snow line is that above that line, above that altitude, the snow do, does not melt because the temperature, the altitude is so less that the snow stays snow even if it is summer. So you may find the sun shining, but the snow is still snow. It is not melting above the snow line. So this post was above the tree line. So what they did, it was about three days days trek. So we were self-contained because now we are going to walk parallel to the Pakistan border, and we were armed. As we moved up, 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 it became narrow, and we could see the Pakistanis, and they also could see us. So there was no war going on that time. But uh, when the LC is there, both sides are sitting there; they are vigilant. Yes. What other party is doing on the border? They will be always on the stand. They are observing with binoculars. We are also observing them during this uh, no war time. If there is any activity, then nobody hesitates to open fire on. Yeah. So this was the state. So I was on this. I was. Uh, I started leading, and I he earmarked the route on the map, and he said, "Okay, I was second lieutenant MP Singh, and they give me around five soldiers. So you open a route from the southern side. So I believe we used to go to that uh, peak from the western side. So he said." Uh, sorry, from the eastern side. Now he said I wanted to open from the southern side. So we generally during mountains climbing, the water is not a problem because mountains have a lot of springs. Yes. So you carry some water for drinking initially, and uh, in between we knew these mountains and there are a lot of springs, and you have fresh spring water, best I think best mineral water you can have. So we used to have that. Now when uh, we were the last two thousand meters, it was completely rocky patch, and we ran out of water. Base is two days below. And the place we have to go is two thousand feet above, and here all the men got dehydrated, and they were all sitting there, no energy left. Because once you get dehydrated, your 
you know my mouth also went goes dry yeah so i kept looking on how do we get water how do i pump energy back into my soldiers we have to climb 2000 feet pole i got hold of my binoculars and i saw there was a patch of around 2 3 feet which was on the side where there was no sunlight and it was snow had not melted so it was still snow so i told one of my shop came i was like come on get, get hold of all the water bottles we are all carrying a 1 liter bottle each so what we did you know soft snow we collected the snow and we filled it in our bottles we pumped it hard because when you melt snow water is 1/3 of that yes quantity right so then we came down 200 meters and then we had these puris so we took out the puris and we eat puri with the snow and then we rolled the puri and we ate it like a kathi roll because otherwise the puri would not go inside no right right we had uh, sugar we had uh, milk powder we did not have water so now with the snow we had water we had a cup of tea and we had puris and then we moved on and we finally reached on top of it so this is a sometimes you know you face with some difficulties where you got to gather yourself and as a leader i would say that if you want to come into defense forces you should have never give up attitude there will be a way out just yes. don't let the you know your guts go out yes okay. <laughs> this is actually one thing that everyone also should learn that uh, we always sit with the problems at times we don't see the solution there can be some solution so if we are solution oriented we can just see the solution so uh, so last question is um, what are the lessons that you have learned from your experience and what advice would you want to give to people so see firstly i would uh, first i always feel that uh, If you want to be a leader, it may not be in the corporate, it may not be in the military. It could be in the corporate world. It could be in the education world. Leaders have to be good readers. So, first advice I give it to this generation: they have left their books behind. I would tell them start reading. Okay, there is no there is no alternate to good books, good reading. So that my first advice to you. So I myself am a very ardent reader. I don't leave any spare time when I don't read a book. So that is first thing that I would advise them to. Second thing I would advise today, in fact, I would also just like to share with you that even I have written some books. I have written about four or five books. Oh, Char, nice. Some of them in the self-help category, like Teams of Tomorrow or Can You Stop the Crushing Extreme. These are the two self-help books. Then I have written a small fiction, and I have written, of course, a book for uh, SSB aspirants. So I have written a lot, but more than writing i like to read so that's my first advice second advice is it's very important to be physically fit not just the army people need to be physically fit even students any other uh, job uh, people they need to be physically fit because healthy mind resides in a healthy body and that's i'm very sure about that so that's my second thing which i i would like to advise because of our sedentary lifestyle too much focus on social media less outdoor time This is a uh, problem which is uh, coming in the young generation. They don't uh, go for physical fitness. So that's my advice I would give. Third, I would like to say is <clears throat> gain knowledge from whichever source you can. See, knowledge is of. I would categorize knowledge in four categories. One is uh, surface level knowledge where you just know little bit about anything. Then there is a shallow knowledge where you know something about something. Right. And there is deep knowledge. when you know everything about something and then there is analytical knowledge where you can analyze various things so as a, a student or as a youngster i feel you should be in the in the realm of gaining deep knowledge let's give you one example if you are reading a news let's say in order ukraine issue is going on russia is going on so read deep don't just say okay ukraine russia war is going on or i feel like that even if you say i feel like that what is the basis of your i feeling right so you should have some deep knowledge of world affairs of countries you are in so go into depth of any topic next i would also advise uh, have good, good circle of friends right and uh, i would just like to add insert one word have good circle of good friends who take you towards the goal right whose friendship matters to you and lastly i would say that uh, avoid distractions at young age especially you asked me about the youngsters right when you are an anvil of building a career right distractions are a penalty are all around us 
डोंट थिंक टुडे व्हेन यू स्टार्ट ब्लेमिंग सोशल मीडिया इंस्टाग्राम व्हाट्सएप पे ये डिस्ट्रैक्शंस हैं ये टाइम वेस्टर्स हैं तो आपको क्या लगता है हमारे टाइम पे डिस्ट्रैक्शंस नहीं थे हमारे टाइम पर भी डिस्ट्रैक्शंस थे दूसरे तरह के डिस्ट्रैक्शंस थे ठीक है बट वी आल्सो फॉट विद द डिस्ट्रैक्शंस ओके सो व्हाट आई वांट टू से टू द यंग जनरेशन इज कीप द गोल इन फोकस अवॉइड द डिस्ट्रैक्शंस मेक अ टाइम बाउंड प्लान ऑफ योर डे इज एक्टिविटी and then and only then you will find that uh, success will touch your feet so these are four five points i, I generally like to uh, talk to these this generation thank you so much sir for your advice actually a lot of things is something i do and a lot of things i also want to do <laughs> i'll keep that advice to me also okay <laughs> so thank you so much sir for your time it was a pleasure having you with us and it really was a very good session and i got to learn so much in today's session so i am very uh, overwhelmed and happy thank you so much all the best to you